Well, oh, mailbag time again. Got some interesting things in here, so make sure you stick around to find out what we've got. The links down below for these things too. If there's anything interested in, check out the links down below in the description. I can't give you links anyway. I can't always give links, but sometimes I can. Well, often I can. Ah, brilliant. It is some batteries. I do like their cling film. And I've got to also then find a different way of storing these. I'll get one out. LIR 2032, 3.6 volt lithium ion rechargeable battery in a 2032 format. So I showed a charger a few mail bags ago, which is meant for these batteries. So I can use these in various devices, have these all charged up, ready to go. When we need to swap one out, we can do that. I actually ordered these a couple of times in different places. I have to see which order this is, but I actually ordered them two different times. First time seemed to disappear, and this is the second order, I think, for 10 batteries, yeah. First order disappeared. I've had two orders go missing this year. SMD Griffers test clips. These are some coloured ones. Now, fortunately, you don't get like all the 10 colours, at least not in this set. I think these are some cheaper ones. Yeah, these are AliExpress ones. I thought I'd get these because they look like they're pretty reasonable. Let's get one out and have a closer look at it. So, got this little squeezable part here. Obviously, you attach that to your lead, you know, your test gear, whatever you're actually using the probe with. And then on this end, you've got a little tiny grabber like that. Absolutely tiny. So, I'll do it side on so you can see it slightly better, maybe. Yeah. So, you can grab hold of surface mount ICs sometimes even with these. These are so small. And sometimes you actually need something this precise to do probing. You know, set up a logic on laser or something like that and hook on. I mean, I was hoping to get like a set which is colour coded with the traditional electronics format. Black for zero, brown for one and so on. We've got a black, we've got a red, we've got a yellow, we've got a green and we've got a blue. Even came with a little manual. That's nice. It's actually a bit of a ooze of quality. I mean, we've got a case. We've got a little manual, a bit more information about them. Maximum 40 volts, maximum 2 amps. There's the angles on the clips. Um, mentions yeah, greater than 0.3 millimeters pin pitch for service mount and back to others. Now this one came from Amazon. Right, this is the actual one, the easily expensive one. So these ones from AliExpress, right, which look actually pretty good. So I've been looking for these. These are this style, which do have the colouring to suit the electronic format. Oh no, you've got to give you cancer. So these are all the colours. So we should have a brown one in there too. Here's a brown one. So your black, brown, white, yellow, purple there, orange. So you've got all the colours in there I think. I think we have anyway. Something like it. Yeah, there's dark green. So you put these on your logic probe and then you can actually have these colour coded for your channels. Make it easier to track. I've got two of these. These were not cheap. Yeah, I think I put them on my Amazon store already. So I've got an Amazon store. You can go and buy things from as well. So I do have that on my description down below. I think I've got these on there. But these were not cheap. But I think they're good quality because these are easy hook brands. They're actually proper branded ones. Now someone put me onto these. I can't remember who it was. I can't remember if it was on Twitter or maybe a video somewhere. I really don't remember. But it was expensive anyway. I think like $30 a set or something. But quality is quality. Also, before I forget, Julian? Click subscribe right now. I haven't done that in a while. Although Julian got these things for doing this sort of thing with. I don't think he's hardly even used them in his videos. I don't know. Maybe I'm nearly one now. Maybe I'm behind the times. That's quite likely actually. I'm always behind the times. Ow! Flip the finger. I strained it over Christmas and it's not come right yet. I need to stop using that finger. Oh, case looks intact. What's in the case? Comments down below before I open it. You've got two seconds. It's a thread gauge set. So you can check threads of bolts in metric and imperial in a range of sizes. This is Maddie Express. We link down below for this. Big example. All right. So you've got male and female threads, so you can check both sides. Got some metric ones which are red. It goes down to M3 at 0.5 is the smallest metric one. Yeah, it's dead. So it's 640, 6 gauge, 40 tip, 40 threads per inch, gauge set. The amount of times I've actually had bits of equipment, I've been thinking, what, what, how do I know what size this bolt is? I think trying to do these ones is a bit ridiculous, but you know, mostly like the smaller sizes would have been useful many, many times. This bolt here, with the hair on it, <laughs> cat hairs, let's find out what this is. Goes in the metric, but it's loose, doesn't feel right. Let's try the Imperial. Right. 
632. There we go. It's that one. Answered. Finally. Now I know where that bolt is. And I've got a few more like that. Now this to me looks like it's not going to be death farm proof packaging because I know roughly how big this device is. And this says to me it doesn't have 100 millimeters of padding all around it. Which is one of the stipulations I say whenever I buy a piece of gear on eBay and I buy something, I always say make sure it's got 100 millimeters of padding completely surrounding it. Well, the box is 160 millimeters, so and this is empty box. They haven't managed it, so hopefully it's not damaged because it looks like it has been packed to the standard that I specified. We'll find out in a minute if I can cut through the tape with this knife, which is getting really blunt. What do we have? Well, we miss. It's got cardboard there. It's got bubble wrap. Ish. It's got a little bit of cardboard on the side. Half fast effort, really. It's got like double layer one in, nothing the other. A single thickness. Considering I always specify things get dropped and thrown in the post and to put on 100 millimeters of padding. Mm. It's got bubble wrap around it. I mean, they've tried to protect it a little bit, but that's not 100 millimeters, is it? No, it might be 10 millimeters. Not 100. Do you know what it is yet? Yeah, comments down below. Come on. Put comments down below. Well, this is really not cutting this tape. Yeah, so it's like one layer of this padding protecting the ends of the device. And yes, that is bent, but it's is bent in the pictures before I sent it, so that's not from the postal damage. That was already bent like that. Hopefully it didn't sustain any damage. So like I said, that was already damaged. That has shown as like that in the pictures I saw on line four boy. So that was already there. That damage was already present, I'm not worried about that. It's got a feet on it. It's got this bit on the side, which is interesting. Bit of a modification. So it's a fluke 731B. DC reference standard, you can kind of just see it under there. So this does 10 volts, 1 volt, delta, 0 0.18, 0 0.19 on any of these. And you've also got a delta here, so the delta's this thing. Right, so what have you got on this dial here is an offset. It actually feels a bit tight, like that knob's on the front too much. It feels like it's pushed on too hard. It's got some little bits under there, maybe it's better to do that. Yes, yeah, this is pushed on too hard. That's adjustable. Anyway, so we've got this, so we should be set to zero exactly. And also got this latch if we want to lock it. Right, so it doesn't get nuts. And so you latch it on, or latch it off, and there's the output. So this is supposed to be battery powered, and someone's modified it by putting these leads on the outside of it. Now maybe that's for transport or something like that, because when you have these standards, they're supposed to remain powered all the time. And have batteries inside them, and if you don't have enough battery capacity, you can extend it, I suppose. Or maybe to take the batteries out from inside to stop leakage problems. Let's open up and have a quick look inside. It's a bit wobbly. Why is it wobbly? Why would that be wobbly? It should be wobbly unless the case is slightly bent. I'll have to have a look at that. It could be slightly bent. In fact, it's quite likely it is. Have a look inside, see what's inside it. There you go. That's what's in there. No battery pack inside it, which is good. That capacitor has been replaced. Oh! You have a wire floating around here, which is interesting. Where's that come from? Hmm. I don't see where that wire's come from. It's got some little posts in here, and also you push the wires into the posts, like these ones here. You know, you got like that sort of setup. You thought that wire would go somewhere. Where's that wire go? There must be a marking in there somewhere. There's a marking there for white, but there's already a white wire there. I have to find out about that one. Anyway, so what I've done is I've put these extensions on here for the battery so it runs with an external battery instead of having an internal battery. Right, there's a switch there for voltage at the back. So I'm going to flick that switch, change the voltage on it, make sure it's suitable for my country, and then I'll plug it in and we'll try it out and see if it actually works. So that thing on the back there, which has pushed this post over, you actually see the end of the post is just down there touching that circuit board. That's probably what stopped it from going any further. See that? It's touching the circuit board down there. Now, I don't think it's touching any traces. I'll have to have a bit of a closer look. Because that's an earth pen, right? So if that's touching near the main stuff over here, we might have a problem. Could go bang. I think I found where that wire came from. Below these ones, there's another post down the side, which you can't quite see on camera, I don't think. Maybe you can just see it there. Yeah, there's a little post just down there. And that is where that wire has come from. I need to put that back on. After much messing around, I managed to get the bottom cover off, obviously because of this being in the way. A bit tight to get it through there. I had to kind of bend the side out slightly so I was sliding it off because we've got it going through a hole on the side there which is already there so you have to watch out for that these feel like Teflon wires too they're pretty hard I think there's a Teflon 
So I wanted to basically have a close look at the bottom there to have a look at this damage we've got and obviously I need to take this back panel off and fix it up but I was making sure it's not touching the circuit board anywhere there's nothing conductive there so that's safe I can power this up I'm all right with that I've just got the fluke here so what I'm going to do I'm going to check the battery connection see what voltage is supposed to be and then we'll see what the outputs are when I turn the thing on because I'm thinking this may actually be required to load down the power supply circuit and smoothing but I don't know when there's that capacitor there it might be fine without it but I want to see what we've got going on here. So let's actually do a DC and AC measurement for a start. Measure both. Check for ripple. Right, let's power this up. So we've got some AC sharp here, but that's probably just nothing. But just floating around amb ambient readings. There's nothing there. All right. So let's turn it on. So 18.8 volts there. 6.7 volts AC ripple. Is it really there? Don't know. Potentially. It says it is, so it's probably relying on the battery to do smoothing. So I have to watch out for that. So we're on, let's do 10 volts first. Check these outputs. Should we do them right around there? Bang on 10 volts, look at that. One volt. Yep, yeah, one volt's good. The delta, which is this thing, which is microvolts. Yep, so 100 micro, 300 microvolts. Yep, that's showing up. I suppose I could do mini volts, can I? That'd show up better. Mini volts. So it's not quite zeroing. It's fully down. Still got something sitting there. Let's do 1.018. Yep, that's there. And 1.019. That's there too. So the yeah, upper's all working, that's great. So all I really need to do then is sort out a battery solution for this thing. Another piece of gear for my arsenal. Now I actually purchased this using money from Patreon. So my Patreon supporters, they contribute to the channel. They watch my videos a little bit early, get access early, and they may get things like manuals, things like that added to the posts, which I can't do on YouTube, but I can do it on Patreon. The Patreon supporters allowed me to buy this. Their money went to this, and this is completely purchased with the Patreon money. So the money I get from Patreon goes back into the channel, back into my equipment. This was purchased with Patreon money. Pretty much my Patrons and my YouTube members as well, so I must have get my YouTube members. Some of which are also Patreon members. <laughs> so, yep, yeah, thanks to everyone that supports the channel. YouTube members and the Patreon members, they help me to buy things like this. And even buying things like through the links of AliExpress and things like that. Um, I get a small commission on some of those things. And that also helps me to buy things like this too. So, that's brilliant. One more package to go. So I'll be doing a video on this as well. I'll do a proper video on refurbishing this a little bit, get the battery packs you know, reinstated, get rid of this, do some better testing on it, I suppose. Fix the panel damage, that sort of stuff. So I'll do a video on this in the future, so watch out for that. Last package. Couple of wrappers keeps on going. Just about there now. Look at this. Old case. Right now, can you guess what this is? You really guess what it is? Do you know yet? It's a tube tester. Now, someone commented in one of my videos not that long ago saying, Oh, um, you know, because I mentioned about not being a tube tester to test something on a is it the IT28 capacity test I was doing refurb and repair on. I don't have a tube tester, I don't have one. This one came up locally. Now, I paid more than I wanted to. I probably paid double what I wanted to pay for it, but it was still cheaper than getting one from eBay. So, yeah, can't really win there, really, can I? But, uh, so it's got a manual there. It's the 151. So it's the Accurate Measurement Co. Incorp. New York Model 151. So I don't know how suitable this is for me. I mean, this is a 110 volt device for a start. I'm obviously going to be running it on 240, so I need to adapt that potentially. Maybe I'll do something there to fix that. Maybe you have a step down transform or something, or maybe I'll have to remember that it runs 110 volts and on the rare occasions I'll use it. Remember to make sure I set it to that. So it's got the circuit diagram unit there as well. And there's a larger version. Nice. So circuit diagrams. It's a pretty simple device, which is why I didn't want to pay that much money on one. It's basically a transformer with a bunch of sockets. There ain't much to it, really. So why they're so expensive now, I don't get, but unique devices, I suppose. 
and it's got some, they're, they're given some extra knobs and they supplied some extra knobs for it. Something about these ones being cracked or something. Oh yeah, okay. That's just spinning on there. Right, okay. So the inner is gone. So that switch there works. This switch, this switch may be frozen. That switch may be bad. That's probably why that knob's gone. But that's probably why it's given us these ones. That dial works fine. So I'd rather keep it original if I can. Obviously there's something wrong with this one. Something's happened to the switch. I'll have to look at that one. But it's just a switch, so I'm not really too worried. But it's nice. He chucks in some knobs for it, and power cord is cut off, so I can't try it. Oh, no. No, no, no. He said the power cord is cut off as per policy, but no, no. The end, the end of cord is definitely still there. He lied. <laughs> and there's a clip there going to the top of some tubes as well, which have these little contacts on the top. I mean, there's probably $10 worth of knobs there anyway. Um, power cord is... Awfully janky, I wouldn't never plug that in as it is. So I'd have to do a video on this in the future too. Putting that apart, checking out the inside, sorting this connection and this knob and switches out and stuff like that. The meter moodle is moving, so it's not frozen. That's one of the biggest concerns. Obviously it could still be problematic. It could be burnt out or damaged in some way. These switches move, so that's another future video. Whether or not it works, I don't know. I have to try some tubes on it when I go to do the video. Links down below for anything you may have seen which you may want to get a link for and maybe buy one yourself or take a closer look at. Some interesting bits of gear to tinker with later on. Watch out for those videos coming out in the future. Catch you later.